Thank you very much for taking time to speak with us, Dominic. Perhaps if you could just start with a quick introduction to CEO Connect. CEO Connect is a peer group network for hedge fund chief operating officers. And you were just literally out of a panel session on um, navigating the new clearing landscape and uh, essentially talking about the fact that there are a whole load of new techniques coming in and a lo load of old techniques going out. And I think, is there any real controversy there? Is that actually something that's in any way a surprise? Shouldn't that always be the case that older techniques are, are let go and new ones are brought in? To be frank, we didn't talk a lot about new techniques. We were an extremely pessimistic panel in which we <laughs> focused upon the uh, negative impacts, I suppose, on the swap business in terms of costs, in terms of risks, in terms of operational complexity. So what are some of those big problems that are, are they coming into play right now? Well, I think from a hedge fund perspective, they're concerned about three things. Uh, one is the uncertainty. They need to know when these clearing measures are going to become effective. They need to know what exactly is going to be in the rules. And at the moment, all of that remains very much in the air, up in the air, uh, even in terms of which swaps are in clearing and which swaps are, are not in clearing. They're very concerned about the costs. Now, those costs uh, come from various sources, but the most obvious is, is clearing fees. Uh, but there will also be extra collateral costs. There will probably be extra operational costs, particularly there's going to be multiple CCPs you have to hook up to. Lastly, there is the risk of uh, your counterparty failing, and your counterparty in this case is a CCP. You've got uh, CCPs being asked to take on a multitude of risks on a scale they've never done uh, before. They're becoming uh, systemically important financial institutions. So uh, they're becoming the single most important counterparty uh, our members and their uh, prime brokers have to face off against now. And this is an interesting talking point. I think a lot of people have been talking today about the, the, the pros and cons of the fact there are so many that are going to come into play. And some people are saying, well, yeah, the more you've got, the more options you've got, the more places you can go. And I can see a logic to that. But does that also mean that now we've got a problem with relationship building, that you're not going to be able to get the same kind of relationships, the same operational structures that, that, that you need to, to really create a smooth flow? Well, lots of players in the market sounds like a good idea, since you have lots of choice and the competition between them will drive down prices. It's a bit more complex uh, in this area, particularly in the early stages where you've got, uh, you are getting multiple CCPs uh, uh, popping up, and you're also getting national regulators very keen to have a CCP of their own. So we're probably starting off with a great many of them. Worse, they are specialising in different things, and they're not competing in the way that would be constructive. Uh, in other words, all doing the same type of business, so it's a kind of Coke versus Pepsi choice uh, of CCP, and they're not competing on the cost front, not just the clearing fees, but also in terms of their margin methodologies. And indeed, they're not allowed to compete, or the regulators prefer them not to compete on margin methodologies. That actually almost sounds dangerous for, uh, from the point of view of the mar market health, then. Mm. That the, the, surely they, we want them to be able to be more competitive and, uh, and uh, I thought that was the point of the regulations in many ways, to make a, a better environment to trade in. Actually the point of the regulations is not to make the markets more competitive and more efficient, it's to make, I think, to make the markets smaller. The regulators see uh, the swap industry and they see um, uh, its innovations as a systemic risk and their technique for reducing that systemic risk is to force as much business, and ultimately I think they want to force all uh, swaps into clearing, is to make the business smaller, uh, more transparent, and in their views, safer. It may in fact have the reverse effect, but it wouldn't be the first regulation to have a perverse consequence. Quite, and, and that's the other thing people are saying, that actually it's not going to uh, do what they want to do, which is get everyone to toe the party line, as it were, and instead it's just going to send people to other markets and look elsewhere out of Europe, and actually well, it will reduce markets, but uh, not necessarily in, in the right way. I think that's a much more pessimistic uh, view than you need to take. I suspect the outcome of all this will be a new flowering of innovation. New techniques will be found to substitute for the old ones. After all, swaps were invented to get round a regulation. Here's another regulation come along to regulate swaps, and I'm sure that, uh, that the very clever people who work in investment banks and hedge funds will find a way to skirt around this one as well without having to go and live in uh, Zug. Well, uh, hopefully that, that will not be the case. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak. It's genuinely been fascinating. I look forward to speaking with you uh, later on. If people want to find out more about COO Connect, where do they go? They go to www. Don't have to say that anymore, do we? No, no. COOConnect.com is where they go to.
Thank you very much. No, my pleasure. Thank you.